Hey guys, this is Rainwolf from Convention Video. Hey guys, Kirito Silverheart here. And Austin the Silverheart. Is it working? Yep, this is Lyria. <laughs> and the typical Lyria with technical issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> here I am. It wouldn't be right if it wasn't. I think last week it was me, but <laughs> this week. So, I'm not sure if everybody feels the same way, but the way episodes have gone so far, I, I felt really blah on this episode in disappointment. Mm -hmm. but dang that preview. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get through the episode, but but oh the preview. Do we have to? Yeah, yeah. I didn't think too. it was so bad. I'm... Given given the content of tonight's episode, I don't think it's gonna take us very long to get through it. But yeah, I think two thirds of our episode is gonna be that preview tonight. So wanna go ahead and do our little summary? Alright, so tonight we're discussing Night of the New Moon and the Black-Haired Toa. Cotton is back and recruits Nikosin, a sage that became a type of half-demon from straying too far into the path of darkness. So, basically, he was, like, corrupted and possessed. Setsuna and Toa take up a task from the demon hunters to locate and slay Nikosin, who has desolated the mountainside and forest of a nearby village. The girls run into Moraha, who is, as always, investigating the attacks in hopes of getting a large bounty for killing Nikosin. They locate him and are ambushed, but Toa has no powers. Setsuna flees with Toa, now incapacitated, and Moraha tries to hold off Nikosin. After switching out protective duty, Setsuna chases Nikosin's head, while Toa is carried by Moraha to safety. The pair again encounter Nikasen, still alive, who causes them to fall into a river. Moraha pulls them out and hides them in a nearby cave. Grandpa Mioga reveals the effects of the new moon on half-demons, and further speculates as to why Moraha isn't affected. For fear of Setsuna falling victim to losing her powers, Toa tries to go find and help her sister, but Moraha knocks her unconscious again. She and Grandpa Moraga put up a barrier spell to conceal their whereabouts, hoping to make it through the night to morning when the moon rescinds and Toa's powers return. Meanwhile, Setsuna meets up with the demon hunters, and they begin their assault on Nikasen. Their tactics, however, start a forest fire that ends up burning away the seals creating the barrier in the cave, and Nikasen attacks Toa and Moraha. Setsuna arrives to try and save the pair, and reveals that she is in no way affected by the new moon. As Nikasen tries to swallow Setsuna whole, he loses his hand, and the hole he created in the cave ceiling reveals it's daytime. Toa, now fully re-empowered with demon energy, uses a Zor Dragon Wave to destroy Nikasen. The trio, along with the Demon Hunters, return to their village where Moraha realizes her dream of making big money and paying off her debt are once again shattered. Kanten, who has been watching the entire encounter remotely, closes his viewer and remarks how interesting this new moon issue is for half demons as credits roll. As we go in, it first jumps straight into where Kanto and the Sage, or the used to be Sage, are talking and discussing the half demons. And we come to find out that he is a half demon, but he's not your typical half demon. He was a human that has pretty much turned into this a demon because of stepping into the darkness. Yeah. Yeah, he basically just went so far off into an evil pathway that he allowed himself to, I guess, be kind of possessed or taken over, corrupted. Mm -hmm. um, so he became a, like, demonic apparition. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a whole hell of a lot to say there. <laughs> no, there isn't. So now they're back at the village. Uh, Sasuna and Toa are talking to uh, Kahaku. He's filling them in on this demon hunt, the mission that he's sending them on. Kalala comes running up to him. Toa picks picks her up and they fly off. And I just gotta say, as as the guy who who was questioning near the beginning of the series in this podcast about the pronunciation of Kilala or Kirara, I, I almost felt personally vindicated because I, I, I rewatched the clip a couple times just to kind of cue in on it because it's one of the few times we've actually really heard the name said so far in the series. Mm-hmm. And Toa actually says Kirara. So I, I just, I got a laugh out of that. And I was like, wow, everybody says Kilala, but it's Kirara. And, but <laughs> there's a weird thing with the L's and the R's. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's, it's, a, I don't know. It's L's. It, it was Kilala in the dub. Yeah, it's been like that for the longest time I've known. Well, it'll always be Kirara to me because I'm a noob <laughs> and that's my head cannon, So We have them flying on Kalala over the mountains and they're, we see all the dead trees and all that sort. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a bleak place. It's definitely not pleasant. Yeah, we get, uh, we get an insert of Nikosen who is laying in wait for the half-demon princesses to show up. And he says that he's absorbed all the resources of the land. 
of the nearby area to, I guess, like empower himself. Yeah, one of his powers must be just pretty much sucking the life force out of everything that's around him. Well, or he was a sage, nature. and that's what yeah. sages kind of did. Yeah. And then Satsuna makes the comment as they're flying. Like anti sage, like, I guess, is what <laughs> yeah. you're saying. Anti sage. Uh, we have the comment of we have a guest. And then it transitions over to <laughs> Roa. <laughs> the fact that she just refers to her that way, it brings back that little bit of comedy to the situation. Because she was just like, uh, well, thought this was going to be an easy job. Now we got to deal with this little brat. <laughs> and I'm just going to say it now, just to get it out there. And since people watching this obviously have already watched the episode and just listening in on how things went with the episode, we'll see what our thoughts were. But I'm not happy on the way Maraha has been treated through the series. I'm really not. Not either. Because from, even though her father was a half demon and she is a quarter demon, I, I get the gist of where having a different perspective, uh, having Sushomaru's children pretty much be the star, but they've pretty make pretty much make her the weakling. Even though she, it, technically, with having demon abilities and priestess abilities. I don't think they do. I really do. Because Definitely through this episode and the last two episodes. She well, yeah, because she doesn't have the poison immunity. But I think that's showing where her weaknesses are. Before this, I felt like they showed how powerful she was. Yeah, but now they just made her the laughing star. Not necessarily. I don't think like she's comedy relief sometimes. But I, I mean, I'm I'm hoping there's a shift soon. I really do because it's. But yeah, I mean, I know that's frustrating. But like, it's I don't feel like she is. Like I don't think I still think she's ba. Like. I think she's badass. I just think that she does. It's kind of showing where her weaknesses are. These are her weaknesses. This is how, you know. So later, if something, a fight happens and she shows that, we're not like, well, what happened? You know, it's not a surprise. But I think we've already seen, like, where Toa's weaknesses are and how that's happening. Satsuna is another story. We've not necessarily seen weaknesses from her. Because the effects of the butterfly. Butterfly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's the guy, really, it's like she's already, like, aloft and distant and kind of cold. She almost lacks a humanistic element to her. There's Mm -hmm. almost a part that is very much like her father that where it's that cold outer shell and that's almost maybe that's kind of how they're playing her weakness she's not good with people um well, i don't even, know even though inuyasha never really was good with people he was a loner but he still sucked he it up a lot of times and took had did friends, the initiative yeah. on what he needed to do yeah but to kind of go along with what asana here is saying I kind of feel like for the first several episodes, it really showed Moroha being B.A. Like the first the first half of what we've watched, at least so far, <laughs> really had Moroha as not just a comedic relief and, you know, some banter material, but as just totally B.A. Like and she was also kind of the audience perspective character. This is a really bad comparison. I hate using it, but it's almost kind of like Jar Jar in the quote unquote quote, new trilogy or second trilogy for Star Wars, where he was just just kind of goofy, almost semi-pointless character, you know, when you meet him, but he was our viewing point. He was the one that we followed along to see what was happening with events A, B, C, and D, you know, throughout most of those movies. I- I'm just um, hoping we get a changeover sometime soon. Yeah. Because I'm not like, because I... I- and I don't know if Crystal knows, but she's muted. You want more of a <laughs> Roja story, I think, is yeah. what it is. You I, definitely I like, I just want like more her, of her I story. like her character more than the... Susuna and Toa, great characters, what they've given us so far and everything like that. But it's just, I've always had that... Atta- it's like, her personality fits with more of my perspective of a character. Mm-hmm. Energetic, has that kind of perspective on everything, but also she's the child of one of my favorite characters from the original. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, that's part of it, too. You want to know what happens to Inuyasha, because the right. show was about Inuyasha. Yeah. Um. So you want to know what happens. I think right now, what they're doing is they're setting it up for what's the events that are going to happen. I feel like if they get the twin story out of the way, then that sets up for where they get to delve into Moroha's backstory. And it's all intertwined, so they have to go through this first to get to and i do agree they i think they because as we've seen the last couple of episodes i think they're trying to they're really trying to wrap out satsuna and toa's perspective Mm -hmm. yeah but it's also called princess half demon so you have to remember that it's going to come from their perspective for a while yeah so but i just want to see her more fights and not being smacked around by what like getting smacked one time and then done yeah that's what's getting annoying yeah the poison 
always in weakness it, it blows. It does. It does. But she does have some strong and important moments. And, and... it doesn't help that she has her father's strong sense of smell. Yeah, that too. But, I mean, how many times did Inuyasha get smacked around and tossed around like a rag doll? I think it's really meant to show yeah, that it he... takes... All of he really got ba- a majority of the time he got back up and just kept yeah. on fighting even though he almost killed himself a number of times yeah but you know well and we've seen uh, and again going back to what i was saying earlier we've seen a lot of that so far with Mor- uh, moraha in the first chunk of the series so far is she was a pretty adept combat and then she also you know had those just teetotal ba moments when she used the rouge and you know crimson dragon wave and things like that you know i think that they are kind of pushing her back a little bit right now like you guys said to get the girls established to get their story arc set up because that's kind of where most of these events are leading from yeah is based on what happened with them when they were kids i think kids, um, and then that the main technical situation is because their father won't take their spot the right spot he's supposed to be going into yeah his father's spot but i also think that it really sets Moraha's character up for just the teetotal epic save moment of the series you know i think it's going to be one of those like she's you we start viewers may start seeing her as kind of like the underdog of the trio yeah and then all of a sudden you realize that oh well there was something from her past that ends up being one of the great big turning factors in this entire confrontation of the series very much true you know because again we've seen with her and grandpa grandpa flea that a lot of what we learn comes through their perspectives you know they're the exposition points so obviously there's there's knowledge there's skill there's stuff there it's just not being completely fleshed out yet and to jump back into the knowledge part we kind of actually see that with when it does transition over to Muraha. it's like this is poison but it's not from a poison from an apparition Mm -hmm. see the villagers all think that it's just demon poison but she herself she was just like no something's not right about this this isn't demon poison this is poison definitely but it's this is some sort of venomous effect but it's not demon <laughs> then when they make the comment of nick i think nicholson is his nicholson. name and i was like that whole l finger expression at the chin the grin <laughs> <laughs> again mm-hmm. I, i'm really loving maroha i'm just i'm right there with you wolf you know, she goes from that st- stern, serious, demon-hunting investigative side to the get-rich-quick scheme. I'm starting to turn into you, Wolf. I can't get my words out. (laughs) She tries to go for the get-rich-quick scheme, and she's just like, oh, big bad demon? I can get a rich bounty for this. And as she's doing this, she's having her thoughts, and then she looks up and sees Toa, Sasuna, and Kalala coming towards (laughs) her. What the hell are you guys doing here? And then just the straight face of disappointment. (laughs) We're going to have to split the bounty again aren't we mm-hmm. if, yeah if they get a bounty because it's been running lately that that's not happening yeah because they've so, all the type of demons they've been they've killing murdered, have murdered no, yeah. they don't have technically a physical body mm-hmm. it's all just or body. so she doesn't have a head to claim yeah yeah they, they're not able to bring back enough of it to claim the bounty so now it transfers up, up to the mountain they're climbing and she makes the comment of I smell rotting soil. And then she starts explaining to him that, oh, he's a sage from a long time ago, uh, but wicked thoughts made him stray from the path, turn into an apparition. Mm-hmm. Then she yeah, says, so, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so this again, you know, sets up the villain, you know, sets up Nikasen, and it answers kind of that question that I posed when we discussed the preview uh, last episode of, well, if he's a half demon being sent after half demons and we're seeing Toa being affected by the new moon, why isn't it affecting him? Because he's not a true half demon. He's not born from a human and a demon. Well, it's it's discussed. Grandpa Flea also explains that, though. I yeah. mean, he, he says some have the power to suppress. Mm-hmm. They, but they, they choose. Yeah, but they all have their type of new moon, but the new moon may not be specifically what his is. Mm-hmm. But since he's not a true half demon, he is part human, part demon, mm-hmm. which leaves me to more think of like corrupted soul, possess, you know, In this things case, like yeah, that. really corrupted soul is pretty much the best explanation for mm-hmm. it. Yeah, so there's not, he still has a human essence to him, but he has primarily been taken over by the demon energy. Mm-hmm. And then Maraha stops them for climbing. Then Satsuna makes this, because the scent is getting stronger, Satsuna makes the comment of, 
really? State the obvious. And then Toa's like, what? Really? Then Satsuna starts making these, seeing these, or sensing these changes in Toa that is happening at this moment. The and heart I love, rate. Yeah, I love this part because it's, you have to really kind of pay attention or have your, your sound up turned just right to catch it. But when she's focusing on Toa and the changes that she's noticing, she hears her heartbeat. I mean, like you can physically, you can legitimately hear the, uh, the heartbeat in the audio track to show where she's focusing. And you hear just, ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. Whereas it's usually something along the lines of boom, 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 boom. You know, it's a more steady, paced out heartbeat. Like and she was like, out. man, she's wheezing. She's she's out of breath. Her heart's, re- you know, her heart's racing. Yeah. She's like, what the hell is going on? Then they back up because he, Nicholson actually shows up. He spews more of his mist. Maraham packs up. She puts her the flame rat over her face. Blocks out the poison. The typical demon slayer ventilate, ventilator or mask that they would wear. Satsuna is wearing. So she throws one to Toa. And it's funny she only has one extra. Yeah, but I can kind of see that because well, the other demon hunters would have one. They would usually carry their own, so they probably only keep. They all probably keep one extra on them. Yes, but just the in case is, there's villagers or bystanders or something. She's or all yours. As of lately. Since they, Toa has come to the Friedel era, most of their traveling is with Maraha and Toa. Mm-hmm. But in argument of that, when they accepted the assignment, she equipped herself for her and Toa. She had no way of knowing that Moraha would be there. Yes, sure. mm, true. So I mean, and they and they established that technically when she says, "Oh, look, we have a guest." Yeah, true. But you know, she was. was- She's Wait. not planning on Moraha to be there. She's expecting her and her sister to go, yep. you know, beat and the ever-loving out of this thing and just be done with it. And now she sees more. And we also see more of it with Susuna caring more and more for Toa as well. Because she's, the first thing she does is throw her the secondary mask to her. She hits her, pretty much. She falls <laughs> to the ground. Yeah, she's oh, she's already incapacitated at this point. She it was literally that last little breeze that that knocked her on her ass. Oh yeah, because she can't handle the poison. Because at this point, she's pretty much not a deep half demon at all. Because mm-hmm. she has no. Because earlier, uh, Sasuna, even when she was sensing um, the informalities in Toa, that there was a different scent. Yeah, she was like, I don't sense her energy. I, her, her smell is different. She was like, What the hell's going on? And then when Toa goes to draw her weapon, there's no blade. Yep, and you know, I mean, we see it kind of flicker for a second, and then she was like, what the hell is going on? She's shaking it like crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just when everything hits the fan. So, Satsuna and Toa retreat. Uh, Maraha holds them back for a little bit, then gets to the point where Maraha actually retreats as well. It's like, can I borrow one of those protective masks, too? It's like, I can't put my strength into <laughs> With just one arm. It's like, I don't have an extra, just take this one. Yeah, which again, you know, it shows that Moraha is a, a capable fighter, but she also understands that, okay, I'm not going to do anything unless I can be fully ready for combat. If I'm having to cover my mouth with one hand and swing with just one hand, you know, she's wielding what's technically considered a two-handed weapon. You know, katanas like that are a two-handed weapon for the, True, proper, because it does have for the, the proper impact and effect. And it does have the long handle. Yeah, it is technically, it is actually a two-handed weapon there's no technically about it you know proper combat technique for that type of weapon is a two-handed weapon so you know the fact that she is only swinging with half strength Mm -hmm. because she's only using one arm perfectly legitimate you know and the fact that she recognizes that flaw in her combat strategy in her combat ability corrects it by getting a mask and then goes full out on it moraha you know great (laughs) cuts his head (laughs) off you're not the ditzy little girl like like wolf thinks the series is trying to turn you into (laughs) She cuts his head off and goes, then starts floating away. She shoots the arrow, goes right through him, the head comes back, and then Satsuna shows up and goes right after him. Okay, so question. Hmm. Does anybody else have an issue with the fact that Moraha did not immediately point out or realize that it was an illusion um, when Holy Arrow Barrage did nothing? Wasn't thinking? I, I, I mean, that's the only explanation I can give because it was Moraha 
if I'm not mistaken, it was Moraha who realized that the giant ice bear demon was a projection, was an illusion. Well, and that's why they weren't doing any damage to it. The thing is with that, I think she figured out that was illusion because she knew about the demon to begin with, the type of demon it was they were involved with. She had prior knowledge of the type of demon it was. Okay. Unlike okay. Nekosin, where he's a half demon, we really don't, they don't really know what his abilities are. Okay, I, I can go with that. But you know, the, but the fact that Holy Air Barrage just goes right through it, it comes back, flies off, and she's just she's not thinking. Oh, well, maybe that was just an illusion, or you know, mm-hmm. or something. You know, I don't know. Considering some of the the trickery and you know disappearing, reappearing acts that we've seen other demons like content for example do in previous combat with them true then i can see where the association wouldn't immediately pop for her yeah so after suzuna goes after him she Maraha goes back for toa they're crossing the bridge to take her down the mountain and then nekosin shows up at the other end of the bridge the conversation she was like oh you can grow your head back <laughs> unlimited bounty <laughs> Again, I, I love the fact that she it, it almost this seems like one of those double edged scenes where she is not just trying to process the scene and figure out, you know, the best combat tactic or the best escape route. But she's legitimately just it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to sit here and banter and distract you for a minute, because the more I think about it, the more I could actually use you as an easy cash flow. <laughs> mm-hmm. He breaks the bridge. They fall into the river, pops over well, to I- pretty much the half end screen. Well, hang on, because we have one other thing that happens right here before the bridge collapses. This is the moment when he does another Sage Venom breath attack, and as Moraha is standing there basically trash-talking him and trying to convince him to, you know, hey, let me just keep, you know, let me just take you in, I'll make you a partner, and all this other stuff, that's when she realizes Toa's hair has turned black. Rewind it, because it was so subtle when they changed the hair, that I was like, when did it It change, and I had to, like... I I saw the transition at first, but then it was like, you didn't... If you weren't paying attention... Yeah, if you were focused on Moraha and her trash-talking, then it, it almost just kind of whizzes by you but yep. like i just happened to catch it out of the corner of my eye for a second i was like wait oh that's a cool effect like they're doing like the ink stain almost bleed effect transition with it yeah i was like that's brilliant i was like that is a great moment and then she stops and realizes that her hair is black and she thinks that nikosin had something to do with it yeah. with that last attack he was she was like what the hell did you do to her he's like i don't know what you're talking about crash because even with her technically a half demon she's never had a situation with her having such less demon blood that she's never really had one of these moments for a new moon mm-hmm. yeah which is something we we discuss here in a little bit i have words i have words about that when we get to it <laughs> And it's Satsuna. Obviously, we have the short part where Satsuna, cat, the boomerang is thrown at her just to give her a heads up that they're there. Then it transitions back over to Satsuna and Muraha. Uh, Muraha's laid Toa down on a rock. She's worn out. Her hair's longer. And does her hair look brown to you? A brown tint because her highlights has- are like a brown yeah. or red. Because I'm looking at, it's like I'm looking at the scene directly of. She, she looks like red. Like I'm not. I'm totally not doubting at all that <laughs> no. that's their mother. She looks. very very much like young Ren oh, when yes. that happened. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but, but I was like, I was okay. Oh, no. I was like, that's a thing. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting because it does have that almost brownish hint to it. But I mean, I don't know. To me, it still it still looks black. Um, I think it's, it's, it's... It has a black hint to it, but it's... I, I think it's... It's in that it's, scene. It's really it's what would be considered contrasting black because it's such a dark scene. Like it's a nighttime yeah. scene, so you know they're having to use certain lighting effects to show that yes, it's dark. It is nighttime, but they can't just make everything pitch black. Well, the thing you is, know? if that was the case, Mara's hair would be in the same boat. Well, Mara's see, hair and, is straight black. Well, and see, that's the interesting thing I noticed about this episode too is uh, Mara's hair. It has that midnight blue sheening to it. I give you the example of Nightwing from the actual like Nightwing comics and things is he has is everybody knows Dick Grayson has black hair. But when they do those contrasting effects to show his black hair in nighttime, it has that bluish hue to it. So I I think it's literally just a like a coloring choice, in my opinion. But again, that's me being, you know, kind of the the technical skeptic about it. (laughs) 
So as things are going on, she was like, she's sitting there thinking, it's like, what's going on? And then she's like, oh yeah, pulls out the rouge. She there like it is. Sum- she almost <laughs> summons grandpa. Like it's like it's that joke my friends make where they're like, um, if you want to summon me, you just set out a plate of cookies and some wine. If you want to summon <laughs> grandpa, you just open the rouge and say, I think I should put it on. And grandpa's like, I heard that. <laughs> yeah, well, because the thing is with Grandpa Brioka, even though he's not there, you know he's in the vicinity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because 99% Because technically happened, he's I, supposed I'm, to be protecting her. I, I am 99% sure exactly of what happened here is Mioka was, like, you know, hiding in her hood or her collar or whatever where he usually hides, yeah. you know, near her shoulder and neck and stuff, and when they fell and hit the water, he washed off. That's more like about it. right. And that's why he comes floating in on the leaf and then jumps yeah. up and bites her. Making perfect grandpa entry. And then he's like, oh, it looks like you haven't yet. <laughs> I, I love the animation of her smacking herself in the face. Oh, yeah, because it actually leaves a, the shade uh-huh. of where she smacks herself. Because she hits herself so hard trying to smack him off that she, she just marks her face. It's it's the little things in the animation that bring me such joy <laughs> for, sheer, mm-hmm. for shows like this. You know, those little tidbits of, of nuance. Yep. So it goes into, and then he, um, Yoga notices Toa's black hair after she's pretty much waking up there. And then he's like, that shade of black hair. And then he goes into the explanation of the new moon. Yes, Grandpa Exposition for the win. <laughs> pretty much a short, shortened version. I know we've explained this in past episodes. Half demons are affected by new moon. They lose their abilities. And then we get a little more description of the state here than what we've done in the past. Yeah, depending on how strong the the demon versus half demon, you know, ratio is, depends on how it affects them or if they're able to negate it completely or change it or, you know, if it's specifically a new moon phase that does it, some some are affected by other phases of the moon. Morha herself points out in this part uh with grandpa, she was like, "I'm part human, part demon. I've never had this problem." And she was and he was like, "Well, technically you're a quarter demon." Mm. So the demon blood probably isn't strong enough in you to affect the change. And then Toa goes into the spazzing about the Tuna about it. Yeah, so right then and there, okay, that answers. So far, we've had two out of the three characters that I've been questioning since the preview last week explain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. During they were explaining exposition, but it was detailed enough exposition that I am not going to write it off. Yeah. It was a legitimate, clear answer. He was a human who went dark and was corrupted by demon energy. You know, that explains Nikasen. And then Moraha is only a quarter demon, so her demon blood isn't strong enough in her body to affect the change. All right, cool. Toa's already explained, and I love the fact that they also explained away why it didn't affect her in modern era. Because she wasn't from that time. Yeah. So that brings up an interesting aspect of the time travel system. My thought was on it that there was not... People exist, had, like, obviously there's going to be the demons and everything like that, but it's so weak to begin with Mm -hmm. in the air that the new moon had nothing to affect. Yeah, and that's kind of how I feel about it, too, is because, you know, ancient Japan and everything, there was a lot of focus on legend, lore, demons, you know, things like that. And there still is, but... Yeah, modern day era, the last couple, you know, last few hundred years, you know, everything's all basic civilization, technology, things like that. All the shrines are existing and then everything else that keeps everything a balance so that you don't have as much of the demon energy existing mm-hmm. yeah everything gets res- gets reverted to legend and lore yep you know at that point so you know you still have those who are respectful and faithful to the old ways and carry out you know their traditions and things like that but there's not as much of a modern threat yeah so ergo the energies and the effects of that time frame aren't as prevalent mm-hmm. it, it was a great little exposition piece I, I i really really appreciate the detail that they work out in these conversations so and then toa ends up I was like we need to go find Sasuna and see how it's affecting her Moroha just punch her straight in the gut so, <laughs> i'm like go to sleep it's like time for you to take another nap mm-hmm. she's like i'm sorry but poof, you're useless <laughs> yep and Mar- uh grandpa asking if there's a way to kind of keep us safe until the sun rises pretty much. He's like, oh yeah, there's talisman. He's like, we could do this. He writes the ta- forms a talisman. I'm like, I'm seeing the first one as she's hanging it up. I'm like, how did Grandpa write this? 
I did, yeah, that was just, pretty funny. And then I love this shot of Grandpa writing it. <laughs> he co- he he jumps out of the ink barrel and, and rolls, rolls down the paper. Just hardcore rolls. I was like, Grandpa obviously has written a book at some point in his life or something. <laughs> he was really good at that. I'd like to read Grandpa uh, Flea's memoir, memoir, please. That would be lovely. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> rolling words on paper is what he calls it. Mm-hmm. Huh. Rolling, rolling, rolling words on paper. <laughs> he's almost sing-song about it. It's great. Yeah. It's like, uh, I'm guessing that's his ability? <laughs> yeah. No, that's I skill. Mean... He has had years <laughs> of training to do that. You just don't learn how to do that. I mean, it was that, Gymnastic. or we see him, like, dunk his head into it, into the jar. And he pulls out, and he starts like crawling his way down the page, and he's using the the pointy nose, <laughs> you know, like a quill. But it's nice to see her actually using her priest abilities for a barrier this time instead of yes. I, I'm if she really got into if Lady Kalade trained her as a priestess, I only can imagine the way things would go for her. Uh. But at this moment, when the barrier is being put up, Satsuna is actually flying above them. And then she loses the scent of them because of the barrier. So we move on into it. They're flying over. They've lost the scent. Maraham says, Grandpa, it looks like it's working. Then it transmissions back over to Satsuna, Kalala, and I always forget the youngun's name. He's sweet. They land. They're looking at It's like, I can't find them. Then she's going into, no, just go ahead. They're looking at the cannons. They fire off the cannons. They're actually just... Things of fire. Okay, let me stop you there before we get into the, before we get into the assault. Mm-hmm. Okay, so during this segment, as you pointed out, Grandpa and Moroha get the barrier put up. As the barrier goes up, Moroha runs back into the cave, mm-hmm. and Sasuna, who just so happens to be flying over on Kirara at the point, suddenly makes the comment, "I can't sense their energy." And I can't smell them. And then Moraha asks Grandpa, is this going to be enough? She's like, after all, we're going up against Nikasin. And he was like, even though he was a sage, anyone who has turned to darkness the way he did should not be able to sense your presence at all. Yeah. So the... So what this brings up to me is the question of, did Sasuna lose her ability to sense them strictly because there's a barrier in place, or is it because of something to do with her and her abilities? Maybe the dream butterfly. Yeah. But also, we really don't know what Sasuna did before she came to the village to be trained either. We don't know what path she was going down. We don't know what she was doing. Has Sasuna been a cold-hearted bitch, basically? up to this point of being back with her sister because she's Shishomaru's daughter, that's just kind of her personality? Or is it because she did some really dark stuff There's up that. to this point? Another... And she has the potential of being like Nikusen, who turned dark. I really feel like it, it's something to do with the dream butterfly, but there's the there's always the possibility. The way I'm thinking, I'm taking it, because even though it says that he's taking the path of darkness, stuff like that, but it's also a wall of spirit energy. Demons cannot, se- demons period, cannot sense through spirit energy unless they are a very, very strong demon or if it's a weak type barrier. Okay, so that's that's where my question is. And and that red flag threw up for me. Because spirit energy is the enemy to demons. Yeah, I didn't particularly know that little piece of information. So I thought, okay, maybe it's just the fact of it's a bear. It's It goes back to the explanation of it's the type of barrier it is. Yeah. So the type of barrier it is prevents just about any anyone who's demon energy sensitive from detecting it unless they're super strong and super focused on it. I yep. gotcha. Because as soon as I was going through my and doing my notes and I, I caught that little transition of going from the barriers up, Sasuna makes that comment, and then Grandpa makes that comment, and then Nikosen says, Huh, they fell here. I can't find their bodies. Something's odd. I can't find them. I'm like, whoa, hold on a second. <laughs> I can see I can see where the wording on the way Grandpa stated that would confuse somebody. Yeah. Yeah, we were we were kind of like curious and we were a little concerned and we were a little confused, but you know, and I but mean the, there's it, it's it's interesting to see. It was an interesting thing that he caught. Yeah. And for it to be and the I had to actually go back and re re go through it and see what the actual words were. But with then saying wall of spirit energy, and since spirit energy is technically the opposite of demon energy, you can see where the problem would exist. 
Yeah, that she couldn't. At first, I thought maybe she did lose when she mentioned it at first, because before we realized why she didn't lose her powers. I yeah. thought maybe she has lost her powers. She just doesn't realize it because of her demon hunter training. She thinks that she's fine. You know, she doesn't, she's not aware anything's wrong because she still has her her demon hunter ability so but the thing is cyclone burst and sea of swallows are not her demon slayer abilities those are her demon abilities demon abilities yeah but i thought maybe they were i was like well maybe every demon slayer is different i don't know are, are they her demon abilities mm -hmm. because sea of swallows you have to have some type of energy because if you look at the way haraku fight or uh Hiyosui fights and coco fights you don't see any type of flashy abilities or anything of that sort Unless it's with a spirit, like a bomb made from a gunpowder mixed with demon poison or something of the sort. Okay. All right. I can, I can see that then. Because I, I always wasn't sure because I wasn't sure if those were just abilities that, cause that she learned through the training that she did with the wandering monk that she mentioned. The vortex um, is a possibility to be a demon slayer ability because of, I, if I remember correctly... Um, the original owner of the boomerang. Go. She kind of had a twister ability with the boomerang if she spent it for a wind blade type. Mm. So because she would actually it pretty much swing it hard enough. It was. It, that's why I I wondered for a moment if the cyclone burst was because she did have that wind. Uh, Sango did. Sango did have the wind attack. But the sea of swallows definitely is a demon. Ability. Yeah, scourge of swallows. Yeah, I uh, I can definitely see scourge of swallows being a demon ability, especially considering that's kind of her variable finisher. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we've seen it used a couple different ways. Yep. So they go into the scourge, they set the mountain ablaze. Um if anything happens to the two, I'll rush there immediately. Is the mm -hmm. words you get from Satsuna. Like and they're perfectly fine. And then all this is light them up. <laughs> Yeah, and I, lo I love how they said that when the party arrived, the Sage Venom was whirling up so heavy that they said, screw it, we'll just burn down the mountain. Yeah, because, <laughs> because there, no I mean, that is a level of, you know, guys, I'm tired of this crap. Like, it's yeah. the only way you're technically going to get rid of the poison go bigger, go kill home. the demon, so... <laughs> Yeah, they're just well, like if we can't get him to come, if we can't get to him, we're gonna make him come to us by getting rid of the high ground. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are brilliant. <laughs> and the thing is, with burning everything, it just refertilizes the earth. So yeah, they're not harming anything, you know. And then changes over to uh, Maraha and Toa. And it's like it's getting a little warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> I at that moment I'm not gonna lie I got really concerned that Toa was gonna wake up and freak the bleep out because like oh. she's already been through a forest fire yes let's oh, put her in a yeah. cave with other fire I was like she's I gonna wake up and I didn't either her stuff and I waited I kept waiting I was like oh no this could be so bad this could be so bad but she didn't she was actually you know she woke up and was actually handling it but I thought it was gonna be nasty there for a minute and the fire is actually affecting the barrier it's it's about to disappear because it's releasing the seals from the wall mm -hmm. and then he senses them toa gets up so soon as been managing herself just fine this area so far from or uh, then toa's not it goes into a whole jamble between the two yeah it, it's it's a giant argument that toa and moroha are having because toa just feels deep down that if this is affecting me my sister has the same blood as me i need to get to her we need to protect each other moroha is just like, your sister is nothing like you. You know, she has been in this era her entire life. She has been fine. Nothing has ever happened to her, you know, particularly during this type of situation with the new moon. Yeah. She's like, it hasn't messed with me. It hasn't messed with your sister. It's only messing with you. Yeah, because the thing is, if it, in, in the long run as well, that if it was affecting Susuna in the past, because she's lived here her whole life in the feudal era, she would always pay attention to see when a new moon was going to happen. Because right. I mean, Inuyasha did exactly that. There were moments where things got so built up that he was not he'd lose track of what phases of the moon or what was co to come yeah but that was one thing he because since it's something he's dealt with since childhood he kept an eye for it yeah and so soon would do the same thing if it was happening to her every new moon cycle mm -hmm. yeah so they have this argument and uh nikasin shows up he breaks a hole in the roof of the cave finds them jumps in 
starts attacking them. Uh, Sasuna shows up to rescue them after they have been turned to stone. I liked this a Medusa ability. I thought that was it was convenient. It was it was a nice yeah, it, change it's a nice of, way to capture your people and take them to where you need to go. Yeah, it's a nice change of pace from just oh I'm gonna breathe something obnoxious and poisonous on you. Mm. It, this is a it has a physio a physical change to them to actually deter them from being able to do anything. Then Sasuna comes breaking in, knocks them over, cracks them out of the petrification. Then Sasuna's like, "What's with this new look? Your hair is black." She explains the new moon to her. And then Maraha actually brings up the comment: "It probably doesn't affect her because of the new moon." Um, not knowing night and day. The way Maraha kind of actually states this actually kind of makes sense. Oh, this is the part that bothered me, but go ahead and say say your 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 thing. Um, I'm guessing since the dream flyer has stolen her dreams. Oh, I guess since the dream butterfly stole your dream, moonless nights and new moons don't apply to her. So, and with that, without her sleeping, a day cycle pretty much doesn't exist to uh-huh. her either. It still bothers me. It- it's still plot armor because she's still there. Like, she's still a de- half demon and she's still there, even if she doesn't sleep. So, I don't know. And I, and I can see, yeah, as plot armor as well. I could see I, that. I just, it was plot armor to me. That's, <laughs> that's the way I saw it because she's still there, even if she doesn't sleep the day and night cycle. She, she's still involved in it. And she's still a half demon. It's not going to erase that. I just feel like it was a way to get something to happen to Toa without it affecting the other girls. Yeah. And yeah, without it affecting and leaving it down just to Maraha. But also, it's it, we really truly don't know how powerful, even though the, it's a dream butterfly, we know it takes dreams. And it's given us these explanations that we have so far, but there's really no clear stating on what else it actually affects as yeah. To the person, not just the person, but on the perspective of the world. The Dream Butterfly has become the C- the series Deus Ex Machina. Because yeah. so far, okay, it prevents you from sleeping, ever. It takes your dreams. It takes your memories. Mm-hmm. You know, so you have no recollection of your past before the Dream Butterfly affects you. I mean, there's, there's no way of saying that. So we know those effects as to the person, but how? what are the effects to the world with the Dream Butterfly doing these things? How does the world perceive her? Right. And then on top of that, you know, we don't know that with the Dream Butterfly having an enchantment on Sasuna. Does it also affect part her of that, Right. Does it affect her physiologically? Does it affect her losing her powers? Does it affect her gaining more power? Does it affect her ability to channel certain powers? Does it... And also... Is this an effect of the dream butterfly alone, or is this part of Trichio. an effect of Trichio, Trichio and the pact with the dream butterfly that they have going on for Ren and the daughters? Yep. And I mean, there are so many factors and variables here. It's yeah. hard to say, but it, they could literally use this as the deus ex machina of something doesn't make sense. It's the dream butterfly effect. And I'm going to say this now, <laughs> and I that. I I think we have verifi- full out verification that Rin is the mother. <laughs> Considering how the girls look and they made the comment about the hair. Yeah, yeah. I've seen I mean, her hair. Her hair didn't just turn what d- didn't turn just dark. It grew. Yeah, it grew a good what would you say six to eight inches. Yeah, it was like brushing her shoulders. And the yeah. bad thing is. It, even with before when Rin had not Rin, uh, Satsuna had her hair down outside of the bun. She kind of did give off the look of Rin mm-hmm. as well. I, I, even though some people don't want it, I think we've got it. I don't. I don't want it, but I'm gonna accept it. Well, I, we're I, making peace with it. Or yep, it's a little creepy, a little weird. He raised himself a wife. Oh but, no, you know, no, 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 not that. <laughs> Anything but that. <laughs> or raise himself a baby's mama? No. Oh, that's no. worse. Lyria, uh, Lyria yeah, is going to have yeah, trauma yeah, for days now. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rainbow. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, 
he spawns, starts growing himself back after the situation. And then we get a chop out of it. And it's the thing is, it wasn't Susuna that did it. Yeah. So he, he reforms, he reappears, and he immediately snatches up Susuna, holds her upside down by the leg, and was just like, I'm just going to eat you, absorb your young energy and, you know, your young half demon energy into my system, and I'll get the pearl for content. We're good to go. And then, think off with the arm. I'm like, is this Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> Another creature lost a freaking hand. Yep. And as we've got from this, and I think it was the only way to really, I think, well, she did hit the body. So the body was probably the weak point or finding the, and as they yeah, did that, state that, that earlier, was, the, it actually core, said that the core mm-hmm. was his, was his weakness. Yeah. That revelation was made uh, primarily through Sasuna's rev- uh, realizing that the head was an illusion. But then, but then at first Moroha hit him and you noticed it kind of like he phased out and floated off. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of like, I kind of assumed he was illusion magicking. It, the head growing back was creepy and weird, but <laughs> <laughs> a little uncomfortable with that. I was like, Ew. but it, it, I, I think we all kind of knew it. So, so, after all that, it's dead. Sun's back up. The whole gang is walking down the sh- pretty much the street. Um, Murahal's all droopy. It's like, there goes my lucky plan for an endless bounty. <laughs> but I love the fact that they made it even worse for her because they pointed out, they're like, it never would have worked to begin with. You really think uh, Giobi is going to fall for that stunt? <laughs> it's like he's too freaking smart to realize you're bringing him the same damn skull over and over. Yep. It's like she was so gung-ho and excited about having a cheap, easy system to beat the system with that she was like, you're too stupid to realize that he's smarter than you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now it goes into pretty much the little scene we have with Kota. New Moon. This is interesting. interesting. Then he feeds out the fire. This was That was a good show. And I'm kind of worried about this now. Yeah. With Kota, knowing this knowledge, and two, with him not specifically using demon abilities but magic yeah is there some type of large-scale magic that could give the effects of a new moon or something it wouldn't be the first time in an anime that we've seen something like that yeah i mean we i'll throw it back to hell the beginning of dragon ball Z. oh yeah where they form a full moon out of nowhere to turn ape yeah when vegeta literally takes a, a ball of energy throws it up in the sky and it, and it produces the same uh energy waves that the mo- a full moon does. Yep. And he goes great ape. Uh, and I'm just like, okay, well, okay. Um, cheat much? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that's a thing. But, I mean, it w- honestly, it wouldn't be the first time. I'm sure there are other examples. I just can't think of any right now. But yeah, if, if he had, if he found some kind of right incantation or something that would produce a new moon or something, because they also say that they call it out that it's not just a new moon, but a moonless sky. Yep. Mm-hmm. So if he finds a way to block out the moon completely from projecting its energy, then that could potentially cause the effect as well. Very much so. So anything else to state for this episode from anybody? I'm guessing that's a no. No. <laughs> no we're all ready for the next one. We're all ready to talk about the next one. So into this damn preview. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I know. I know. I know cuz well, I said the same thing. Oh, same y'all thing. already know what my I, that one word I put in. <laughs> <laughs> um, that wasn't so much of a Who word wants to give as run, it was the general rundown. Kira, you, you want to give the general rundown of what the preview was like? I, I went boom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the episode next week is going to be called the delicious feudal monks and what we find out is that there is a demon going around that feeds on monks and shinto priests and the princesses are requested by the demon hunters to go assist and protect one of these monks who just so happens to be mother loving moroku moroku's back baby and i am so freaking happy for this kirito was more excited like because we watched the episode together and he smushed my hand to death and <laughs> flailed around like a child and i was like you are more excited than i am and i've seen the original series <laughs> moroku are was one okay? of the i stated this at really the beginning of the, of the series when we started moroku was one of the very few characters that i picked up on and i got kind of an association with because i saw a lot of moroku stuff 
in the handful of episodes that I got to watch. So I really, really like Moroku. Moroku and then, was my favorite character from the original series. Yeah, and then coming back into the first episode of this one, when they do the where are they now type of deal, yeah. seeing Moroku back in action with Inuyasha and the gang, I'm just like, this is awesome. I'm getting to see my favorite, plus all these ones that I know some things about. You know, I get to see a lot of badass interaction here. This is great. And the fact that Moroku's back just makes me super and giddy. One of the sentences that we get through this preview, he wants to attain divine power through 1,000 day training. So yes. there is something that is taught between the monks. Mm-hmm. It's well, it means be- that maybe, and that it also says, you know, he's doing that. So he's not just wandering around without Songo. So hopefully we'll get some sort of explanation. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get uh, to that in a second. Maybe. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but another uh, thing that we get to see in this episode uh, is we get to reveal another one of the four perils. Yes. Yes. And that that demon is uh, Totosu. And <laughs> if anybody else caught this, his face is so derpy. <laughs> like, a, that demon has the derpiest yeah, the, the, face. the final image of him. The next part. The, there was, was like, a pa- a moment where we paused, and his face was just like he's got like the crooked eyes and the and the goofy face. I'm just like I want to riff track this episode so bad. Anyone that knows me right now, definitely with the next scene that, of this preview and the last part of this preview, everyone right now probably sees, like, if you can see me animate me, I have, like, probably steam coming out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> but but one of the scenes that we see with Totasu is he's holding what looks like an orange rainbow pearl. So I think we're getting introduced to another rainbow pearl. And I think that would be number six or seven? Because... I've lost I'm, track since it's been a I'm while. I'm going to go these. through. We need to write them down. I'm going to go through tonight after, seven, after this show. I think there and, isn't there. Didn't okay. So I told him there was eight. I was certain there would be like eight pearls. Um, I think he stated there was seven originally. I don't know. I feel like there's eight. Like, see, I, I don't remember like there actually being the a rainbow, number given. All the I don't no. Know. Um, during the episode when at the lake with Riku, that he states how many eight. rainbow pearls. Yeah, are. yeah. It was. I thought it was seven. Does he? Yes. Well, yeah, I'm, because yeah. we had to talk about the pearls. Remember? I'm going to have to was, go back. There were set uh, because there's seven perils, right? Or is there six perils? There's only four perils. And then the girls had the three, but the perils didn't all have a pearl. It is, we're mathing right now. We're trying to... <laughs> all right. So Moraha has ruby. Gold is Sasuna. Silver is Toa. Yep. Blue. The was... green one is with Giobi. Mm-hmm. That's uh, the blue one is with what was his Riku. name Riku. Yep. Riku. And the purple one is technically with Riku now. So this because, is actually number seven. Yeah, so orange would be number seven. So we have all the pearls in play. Get the game as a foot. Mm. So I'm waiting to see how this peril's going to... I'm just going to say right now, this peril's going to get fucked up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he is not going to see the light of day again. He, <laughs> he, he chose the wrong group to come after right now. I am... I am waiting. I am so happy to have Moroku in the series now because now we're getting back to having someone other than just the demon hunters, yep. like uh, Hisui and stuff <clears throat> with them, or Lady Kaede. And Lady he- Kaede has been a micro presence yeah. in this series. You know, but Grandpa only... is a is an exposition system for this series. You know, the Demon Hunters, they come in and they, you know, blow some shit up and then they're gone. So as of right now, the only two that are missing now that we have no involvement are is Shippo and the Wolf Tribe. Uh-huh. We have no idea where those two... Well, obviously Inuyasha and Kagome, but I feel like the as Wolf of right Tribe now, will show up with with the backstory with Moroha because of the way she's dressed. And she's a bounty hunter. Because the wolf tribes are bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. She Mm. screams like she was ended up with the wolf tribe. Screams it. I have a feeling that's where she was taken. Mm -hmm. Because they would protect her and nobody would really want to mess with them. No. So we get an image uh, as they are announcing the name of the episode, the delicious fetal monks Mm -hmm. of a long, dark-haired female. We know kneeling, who it is. No, we... kneeling in front of a stone with carvings on it. He made me real. Okay, I'm gonna say Kirito made me really sad because I thought it was Songo. I was Asuna thinking- was just like, "Oh my god, that looks like Songo." I was like, "That it also looks like a that also looks like a grave marker." And I bet that's one of their daughters. I it broke me when he said that. It, like, oh, now that you. 
Uh, doesn't that make hit, you sad? Oh my him, god, Warby. see, you see he's him. evil. <laughs> I him. almost wept openly. Be, uh, so I mean, mad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have Oh no. I'm sorry. We have bantered about this topic long enough through this damn series that Moroku has been traveling again. Yeah, Moroku hasn't been with him. Moroku mm -hmm. was responsible with bringing Takachiyo to Jayobi. Moroku trained Cessna for a little while. He has been traveling on his own. And now that I look at it, when it's a zoom out image, it is a younger body stature. That's exactly what I told Asuna. I was no. like, she looks he way too young. He made a good point too with anime. <laughs> you gotta with anime protagonists that they usually there's a several reasons One of the they go for is power. Dead. Well, yeah. not just that too. There's also like when they seek power. When people seek power. Yeah, There's this is in, this is in reference power. to the comment that he that um, Roku is doing is wanting to do this thousand day training. There is something that I have come to realize about every anime that I've ever loved. There are only one of three reasons why you want to make yourself that much stronger is either a you're just a, a combat nut like fucking Goku, <laughs> yeah, who just wants to be the strongest and fight the strongest and win. You want to do it to protect the ones you love, yep. or you want revenge. And I'm sorry, but having two daughters and a dead wife, that's two out of the three motivations. And the possibility of a very good friend that are possibly dead as well. Oh no, that's a bad idea too. Because so, as of right now, our, our current status on Inuyasha and Kagome... If that is Songo and that's a grave marker, that could be real super bad for someone else. That might so either way that it works, someone's dead. Yeah, it, I mean, someone's if dead. that, like Austin said, if that is Sango and that's somebody else's grave marker, then it's not looking good for. Damn, Kagome. it's gonna hurt no matter who it is. Yeah, but if that is one of the daughters, yeah, that's if one that's of the one of the daughters, that's, that's a younger, that's not, that's that's a younger not, body stature. Yeah, and that's not how she she had her hair in the loose ponytail, but her her uh, hair tie was it was lower. It it was yeah. yeah. Oh no, because Sango's pretty hair devastating. was much longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we when we saw it too, it just looked very much younger. We were very like I'm... I because it went by so fast, so I didn't think about it at first, and then but now that I actually paused it on that uh, if scene, you, well, and if you look at the next frame of the close up. Yeah. It's her, and she's got that kind of like short side cut up yeah. with the hair where it comes down, uh, just below the ear line, and she's praying. Yep. Those feels, my friend. Those feels. So either this is going to be We're one way or another, of... something something heartbreaking is going to come up in this moment. And but we'll we'll still know what happened to Songo, even though it's going to break me and it's going to hurt. We'll still it's gonna break we'll a still, lot of. We'll people. have some closure. There'll we'll be some yeah. closure. Yeah, Listen, I'm, no spoilers, but it's like the last fifteen minutes of the last episode of The Mandalorian made me cry for fifteen minutes. So why <laughs> not too. let this make me cry for you know ha whatever how long? And with Moroku actually coming into play now, we might have a spin on perspective on of what happened of well what happened to sango for one and two what is the status of muraha's parents mm, that's possible because obviously, this could be the turning point where we start to break like you were wanting earlier you know yeah. in this episode wolf where we start to focus a little less on the twins and focus on a little bit more of Moroha's backstory. Yeah. Because I honestly, if this it's is... It all ties together. Like, I know this all ties together. This is all one big circle. There's a reason... Well, I have a feeling this one's going to be more of an action episode than the following one will probably be a lot of explanation. I hope so. Because with how much explanation there needs to be... Because, obviously, Murugru is traveling, one, to become stronger, because of, obviously, from what we're seeing, a dead wife but also for two of his very close friends status deceased as well from our what well, our knowledge he may know something more he may be getting stronger for that as well he may not know where they're at he may yeah. be in search of them and that might be why too so we just really have to wait and see but this episode's going to be rough <sighs> my head exploded <laughs> yeah i mean a thousand days is Bad. About two and three fourths of a year, or two two years and like three fourths of another year. So it's almost three years. So yeah, he's been at it for a while. I'm wondering how far into this thousand days he is. If is Red's he just starting it? Is he already I have a like feeling? Since they're giving us this point, we're seeing how long his hair is at that. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's another thing I point out to Austin, too. I was like, look at that hair. Damn. He's been at this for a while. He may be at the end of it, or he may be close to the end of it. Yeah. But I think more, I'm thinking the end of it, because they would not be bringing him into play if it was not ending. I don't know. I don't know. I could all, I mean, again, I go back to, you know, other things I've watched, you know, not just anime, where you bring in a character and they go, okay, well, I'll help you out for now, or we'll be together for now, but then when this is over, I have to go back to what I was doing, but if you ever need me, holler at me. Yeah. You know, so this could be a situation where they bring in Moroku, they explain events A, B, and C of what's been going on, you know, with like Sango or possibly Inuyasha and Kagome or whatever. And then at the end of the episode, he says, okay, I'm going back to training because he's getting close to being done or he's only halfway or whatever. But there's always the possibility of now that he's in, he's introduced. Now we can rely on him when the shit hits the fan and we need him. And this is not to this episode, particularly or the preview, but with this happening for the dub side of things, I wonder who's going to be replacing him as a voice actor. Oh, I know. That's oh, bad. yeah. Oh. Because he was he was originally supposed to do the voice. Yeah, Yeah, he was going to. He was. I think they got. He passed. I think the last scene they got recorded with him, from what I can tell from where the dub is at at the moment, is the first episode pretty much. And that was it. Mm. Because after the first episode, he has no dialect. Because even the the little spots we see him throughout the series, he's not talking. Yeah. 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 It's always just hand gestures and head movements. I guess so. Oh, it's also heartbreaking. It is. Next week. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for screaming, crying. <laughs> <laughs> prepare for the worst, hope for the best. <laughs> and and you know something? It almost it, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if they did it as a two parter. Oh yeah. I think this would be a great point in the time frame of the series mm-hmm. to get a two parter in here to really start breaking up some of the, you know, monster of the week stuff or some mm-hmm. of the monotony of focusing on uh Toa's new ability or Toa's new weakness or Moroha's new ability this, or Moroha's uh, weakness. Yeah, this whole section might actually end up being a two part episode. Because they'll probably we'll probably get started either with information, then a slight fight scene, then just the rest information. Then it goes into the next episode where it finishes out the fight, more information and then so on. Yeah. Is that all what everybody uh, I think we could go on even longer, but I think for the most part of this episode and the preview itself, I think we have covered it pretty well. I think so. Whew. Next week, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know we I know we said that a lot at the end of a lot of our episodes, but next this week, one, this. like the, the two biggest ones that have hit us so far have been the, the dream episode where we got the visions of Kagome and Inuyasha and, and everything. But then this week, this coming week is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. And as the guy who doesn't really know a whole hell of a lot from the original series and stuff, being able to pick up with somebody that I do know, this is going to be a great episode, in my opinion. This is going to be great. I'm Rainwolf. See you next week. (laughs) (laughs) This is Kirito Silverheart. This is Asuna Silverheart. And this is Lyria. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us here over here on Twitch. Show us some support. Show us some love. And leave some comments if you have any thoughts over on our YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And see ya. Bye. Bye.